Hi, I'm Bruce Aisha, and in this video I'm going to look at audio loops in Cubase. So we have a project page, and I've already got some audio loops up and running. Now, I want to add some more interest to what I've got going here, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive into Media Bay, and we can use that from the menu here, and I've also got the shortcut key F6 set up. And we have a whole series of uh, folders here of audio content. In this case, I'm going to go to this Hip Hop Vault folder, and this is, consists of lots of audio files. I'm going to make sure I narrow it down to audio files by making sure I have audio files selected for the only ones that the search will pick up. And I can then go through and actually look at what's available. Now, this is a chord. And at the moment, it's not playing because it needs to wait for the project play. So in essence, it's going to try and play this in time with the track. Let me play the track now. Now, obviously, the timing... The timing works, but the, the, but the pitch itself is slightly out because the sample is recording a different key to the original, to the audio I've actually got playing. Let's try and look at something more rhythmic so we don't come across any of these kind of pitching problems. So we have some hats here. Maybe I'll try narrowing it down by drums and percussion. Percussion loop. Okay, so that sounds interesting. I'm going to press play in the project. Now notice that it actually plays in time with the project, even though the file here has been tagged as saying it's 68 beats per minute and the audio in the, pro the, the project tempo is 84 beats per minute. The important thing to realise is what I've got in these buttons, it, they allow me to actually select the way in which Media Bay plays back the audio. So it's automatically going to play it when I select it here. It aligns the beats to the project and it waits for the project play to start playing. With the align beats to project, it means it actually plays in time, so it will time stretch it so you can actually hear it playing with the project, which is most useful when you want to, particularly with, with um, percussive bass loops, to check how they will sound. Now I like that, so I'm gonna right click on it, and I'm gonna do uh, insert into project at left locator. Now hopefully in the background, if I close the media bay window, I'll then see I've got my new audio file. If I press play, it will play along. Now the interesting thing here is actually playing, it sounds slightly different to how I was hearing it in Media Bay. And that's because there are different algorithms which, which work on the time stretching. If I want to make sure it stays at the same pitch, I click at pitch. So that will be the original pitch. So whatever tempo I play it at, so if I now go to say 120, It plays faster, but the pitch is the same. If I go back to 84 and play it back at that, you can see it maintains the pitch. It just stretches the elements of the, of the audio. I'm, in this case, I'm going to use tape. And then what this does, this will actually slow it down or speed it up in the same manner as a turntable or a piece of tape. And the faster I play it, the higher in pitch it'll go. Let's go back to 84 and let's play it along with the rest of the audio. So I quite like that and it works quite nicely what I've got there already. Um, I'm just going to dip into the audio pool um, and what this does, this allows me to see um, what's going on um, in terms of the audio files I have in the project. Um, and I press Control P. Um, I can also uh, navigate to it using the, uh, if I go into, uh, into media and I go into open pool window, you can see there it allows me to actually look at it from, uh, from the menus itself. And you can see I've got these three audio loops in the project. So the audio, under this little audio folder, it will show all the audio I've actually got loaded into the project. And you can see here also that it mentions the tempo and the, and the time signature. 
They're also in the names of the files and also they will have been tagged by Steinberg when they're included as part of the content with Cubase. All the audio files are tagged for their tempo. So it means that when you load them up, it will work straight away. You'll also notice, in fact, this Kalimba loop um, has actually been tagged with the key. Now, you might notice a slight anomaly here, A sharp and B flat. Well, in fact, they're the same note depending on which key you're in, but B flat and A sharp, that would be the, the black note, which is below B or above A, same thing. Um, but they've been tagged, so it means that when we try and use other files, we can actually mix and match in interesting ways in terms of key and also tempo. You can, of course, click on these and change them yourself. Um, and when you bring in your own audio into the project, you might drag and drop into the project some of your own audio loops, even if they're not set up in Media Bay. So coming back to this. <laughs> We can then use the audio in the same way that we might use um, standard uh, MIDI parts. We can select them, we can drag them over, so alt click and drag, and we can then expand the arrangement. We can choose to mute different elements. I can use the mute tool there. I can also right click and actually use the tool here and mute. We can also use things like the range tool to select certain parts. If I want to just choose maybe this element here, I can drag that, select it, do alt and drag and I get this and I can repeat it. So you can choose smaller parts of the audio. So when we come to it here, let's see what this does. I quite like the loop of that element there. I'm going to just go and see, just work on this. Let's move over to this section here, these two bars. We can, of course, go down even further. If we change the, the snapping of the grid to something much finer, we could go in and I can actually just choose this very small element here. drag that over or I could choose that and then press delete and delete that element select this again with the select tool push it back over and copy it multiple times using the alt key we also have a bunch of functions which can actually work on the audio in some interesting ways we go to the audio menu here got processes and we could do things like reverse. Let's reverse this as well. What other processes have we got in here? You'll see you can do things like pitch shifting, you can change the gain of individual clips. We can do also other things, these little tabs along the top, these little marks, we can actually change. We have fades. The drums will fade up in that section there. Let's drag that back. We can also have fade out. We can also change the gain by moving that little square box in the middle of the audio clip. And we can do that for each different event. Now when we want to flesh out this, maybe using, we got some, when we do quite a lot of edits on the, on the project page here, um, you can obviously select a load of these events and press Alt and move them. We can move them around and that works quite nicely. But also in the same way that MIDI exists in a MIDI part, and actually has to exist in a MIDI part, we can actually um, put audio into parts as well. If I, if I right mouse, if I control right mouse click, we can bring up this other window and it allows me to choose a whole load of other different functions. And I can do events to part. And what that does, it doesn't look like much happens, but in fact, it bundles all of these events into one little box. And it means when I select them, I can move them all together. 
And that brings up another thing, another layer of editing. If I then double click on that, in the same way that MIDI brings up the MIDI editor, if I double click on this, it brings up an audio editor window. Let's zoom in on that. And inside it, you will find the original events. So you can then focus on these and do interesting stuff from within this window. And of course, you do it while the project is playing anyway. But it means that anything I do in this, if I swap this around, let's zoom in a little bit more. Let's make sure the snap is on. I can do some interesting things here. And if I come out of that window, you'll see it will have updated that event. And I can just copy that in an easy way. It means that when I've got lots of very small events, they're all, everything's bundled up in a quite nice, quite nice way. And you could use this for maybe if you're working on songs, it could be a verse or a chorus. It's particularly effective when you're doing lots of edits on vocals or you're doing lots of edit on drums and you want to keep those all nicely bundled together. So you can see that audio loops um, can be uh, a very simple way, they can be used in a very simple way, just dragging them in, adding a bit of percussion to a track, or building tracks from scratch, allowing you to kind of get things going. But also you have lots of functions for actually manipulating the audio, whether they be loops or even one shots in some quite advanced ways. You can of course do them from the audio menu with processes, and you'll notice here there's a whole set of key commands I've set up to deal with some of these things. You can also uh, control click, and actually bring up, instead of the tools, you can bring up this whole selection of functions that allow you to do some interesting things. Notice the difference though that the, this now works on an audio part. If I click on an audio event and do the control click, it brings up some other features. Um, I, can, uh, I can actually do some other, other, other actual processing on them. And the processes will also come up here as well. So we've looked at loops in Cubase, we've looked at how we can bring them in via the media bay, and we've looked at some of the range of processing that we can actually do on them, reversing, changing the gain, doing some fading, chopping them up, moving them around, and putting them in parts to make it much easier to find a way of actually arranging the track, or arranging the elements, or arranging the edits that you've actually done.